Hi, I'm Renata. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about spinal fusion um, post-op and uh, my friend Melinda is going to speak about her operation. Melinda, so tell us all about what happened to you, why you had surgery in the first place? Okay, so it's, for me it's years of degeneration mm -hmm. and then combined with the one or two traumatic events mm -hmm. um, and then your body try to compensate for about 10 years and then your body just can't compensate further mm -hmm. and my activities of daily life, my quality of life was affected mm -hmm. and to the point that I felt hot water pouring down my leg, that's the sensation sure. I had and just constant disturbance of sleep, um, every day taking anti-inflammatories mm -hmm. And then um, just had it one day and decided to start the process. Okay. Um, also, just uh, just also tell people why you think you were your spine degenerated as much as it did. So um, genetically, I think there is a weakness in our family with low back, um, and then of years and years, twenty-five years of provincial netball, mm. ten years of half marathons. 10 years of carrying children on one side of my hip mm -hmm. um, and then one or two water ski accidents. And your job. And the job, the physio job, standing, bending, lifting patients. Mm -hmm. And then actually the two years working in hospital where the staff was on strike and we actually had to roll, the, roll over the paraplegics. Sure. We had to be the team every two mm -hmm. hours, mm -hmm. um, taking patients down to the gym, having to get them out of the wheelchair. So yeah. Mm. That's where a lot That's of the wear and tear comes to. Yeah, okay. My injuries occurred, I think, through childhood, you know, falling off horses out of trees, um, getting concussion on a seesaw, that sort of thing. Um, and with work and everything, it just degenerated to the point where I couldn't stand for a long time and I couldn't walk on a flat surface for a long time. So the, I had went for three different um, opinions and they all said I needed fusion. So I landed up with posterior fusion of three levels. And um, mine was done from the back and the, the, the cut was down the midline. So with Melinda, she had it done from the front and the back. So could you explain what that was? So in my case, a lot of the pain came uh, from spinal stenosis. And the only way to alleviate spinal stenosis is to open up the spine. So just to fuse would mean they keep the spine as is and they make it rigid and that would not take my pain away. So they had to go from the front and open up my spine by giving two new discs. Mm. Take out the diseased disc, put two new, on, two new ones in and that opens up the spine and then at the back they could then put that in place and fuse it and that was laterally done. Mm. For some reason he doesn't like to disturb the posterior longitudinal ligament. He said mm -hmm. a lot of stability comes from that. Mm -hmm. So they go in from the side, disturb very little and then put your plate and three screws on each side. Okay. So now I'm taller. So you had the three screws which means it was a two level fusion. Two level fusion. So I had the four screws which is a three level fusion. So. Um, Melinda's been a year down the line and she's just done a week away walking in, the, in South Africa um, in her manus, which is a nice hilly area and mountainous area and she managed fine. Absolutely no problem. So I'm still busy rehabbing myself with trying to get strength back in my legs and flexibility and upper body strength. I'm back at work after six weeks um, so it's all good. And I'm happy that I've had it done. You're also pleased that... No regrets whatsoever. Yeah. Although you need to manage your expectations and you need mm. to know what you need to put in to get mm. it out after a year. Yes, they do. I do believe that. I think you have to commit to the post-operative mm. uh, care. Um, doing the surgery is all fine and well in six weeks of, of um, you know, the healing, but everything's still soft. So, and your body's lost a lot of strength. And it will scar. So if you uh, don't remodel that scar tissue, you're going to st uh, be stiffer and... Yeah, it's going to take longer to heal. Yeah. So I've committed to four times a week in gym where there's a cycling episode, a stretching episode and a Pilates and then weight training. Mm -hmm. Four times a week. Okay, what, she, what Melinda's going to explain to us as well, it was the pain that she was experiencing before the operation and what made her decide to have it done. So explain your night pain. So it was actually not even pain, it was the fact that I couldn't go to bed anymore comfortably sleeping because the numbness. I would lie on my one side, 20 seconds, then the burning numbness started on the one. If I turn over, exactly the same on the other. If I go on my back, I'll have a restless leg the whole night. And that is actually the reason why I had the op. You can cope in the day, you can take a painkiller, you can take an anti inflammatory you can move, you can put an ice pack on, but at night you're stuck and now you're rolling, you're waking your partner mm -hmm. and you have no night sleep whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that was really my reason. Okay. And then afterwards, my painkillers was at least for six weeks that I continued taking it. Mm -hmm. and, and yours mm -hmm. was different. Yours mm -hmm. was... 
Yeah, so yes. I didn't have night pain or any discomfort at night at all. Um, mine was just basically purely degeneration and stenosis. So it was kind of squishing the nerves. Um, and then one week post-surgery, uh, when I went home, I didn't need to take any more painkillers. Yes, of course it's stiff, but I wasn't mm -hmm. in pain. So it just shows you that every person's unique mm -hmm. in their, um, their presentation for the surgery and also their, their reaction after surgery and how their prognosis is over a year or two years. You know? And then also that means they fixed your problem. Yes. In fact, you didn't need painkillers. Yes. After your surgery, which yes. means to actually fix your yes. problem. Not that it was fun in that first week, but uh, I would say by about the first two nights, are you're in ICU, so you have a lot of intravenous um, painkillers, and if you need, you feel like you need more, there's a little button you can push to give you a little bit more. Yes, but they take that out after two days, and then you're on to oral medication. I have to say, I prefer the intravenous ones. <laughs> when did you first? find that your body turned for the better where you can say now I can feel I'm I'm repairing fourth. well I think the fourth day okay and I was sitting up in bed but with my legs crossed and they couldn't believe that I could do that but I think it's because my back has always been stuck like that so it wasn't such a big difference you know whereas if you had a normal spine that could uh, flex um, you couldn't do it because now all of a sudden you're stuck in this kind of extension thing you know and then your second um space or time when you find things turned for the better where you thought now I'm getting improving how many weeks After, would you say um I would say by about the fourth or fifth week yeah mine was the third yeah, yeah where I so I was like okay I'm starting to get back to normal but then I realized how weak I'd become mm. so I was m moving around and I was you know doing things and um, driving and all that kind of thing but when I tried to walk up uh, some stairs that I normally take when I've been to the shop, I was like, oh, <laughs> my little knees are like, oh, shaking. So not a breathlessness, more muscle. No, more muscle, yeah. And when did you drive? Uh, after like 14 days. So that's quick, yeah, obviously mm. three weeks. Yeah. yeah. So I felt, I, I felt comfortable to do it then, yeah. And I must say the biggest change would be at six weeks when I started working. Mm. That four patients a day, I was nearly dead that first mm. night. And mm. then it turned and then I was back mm. into my normal mm. routine mm. as before. Yeah. No, I also felt that same thing. I was like, I, s I slept like crazy that night. Um, this morning I woke up at eight. I was supposed to wake up at six. I was like... <laughs> So yeah, it takes it out of you. What would you say is the one thing that you can't do now, activities of daily life, that you find difficulty doing? Leaning, leaning, like trying to pick something up. Still, yeah. yeah. So because now you use, obviously you use your knees a lot more. You have to use your knees a lot more because you need to use your knees to bend, not like bending from your hips. Yeah. So that's what I find. The like you so go I'm down, sure. all of a sudden you're like, oh. I can't go anymore. So that you've got to build up again. So that will totally uh, disappear by the time in one year. I yes. find by six months even. I bend now and I forget I've had a back up. But mm -hmm. the one thing I still battle is to get up from the floor. Yes. Once the, I'm on the floor, like yes. in gym, to get up, I yes. make sure no one looks. And I sort of yes. go on my one leg and then I get up. Yeah. Uh, I used to be able to do the primal squat and then just come straight, straight up. Uh, I can't do that yet. I have to do it assisted. So that's something I want to get back to be able to do, but I think that'll come. And another big thing is getting in and out the car. Remember, everything pulled and you have to really think how you mm. get in the car. Now I'm in and out the car. Mm. I actually do not know I had a back up, mm. except getting up from the floor stiffness. Mm. That's the only thing that's left. One thing I have noticed that I do when I'm in the car and I want to get out, I, I move like that with my knees together and then I get out the car that way. So doing that, is not Triple for change. me Triple for change. me is not so yeah. good you know so I, I shift and then i jump out like that yeah i can honestly say i have no symptoms whatsoever i do not even know i've had a back up mm. so melinda at what stage do you think people should consider surgery this is something we discuss every day to our patients uh, there's three major things it's firstly how much medication are you taking what is your liver and your kidney looking like mm. secondly is there a danger of neurological damage not compression not irritation damage and they can do a nerve conduction test or pretty much if you start having a foot drop or your knee starts giving that's enough reason mm. and thirdly which is probably the question the doctor asked me first is what is your quality of life mm. and if i think back um the fact that I didn't look forward to sleeping anymore, 
because that is where uh, the pain and the discomfort was. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a patient who said she couldn't go to the shops to disc him unless she has a parking right outside because she couldn't walk 100 meters sure. before the pain started. So okay. quality of life, uh, what does your kidneys look like? Is there damage from all the medication? And thirdly, is there neurological damage that's irreversible? Thank you so much, Melinda, for coming in to help us and understand this a little bit better. Um, I'd like to say that here you've heard our stories and hopefully you will be encouraged to have it. It's not as bad as you think. And uh, thank you for spending time with us and finding out a little bit more.